Um, so today uh, we were talking about uh, the Spartans versus the Soviet Union um, and their simulators. We we're comparing and contrast the two um, with uh, some connections to what's going on today with uh, the Russian events and the, and the meddling in the uh, United States uh, election of 2016. Um, so like the last lesson we were covering, the Cold War, uh, this lesson, we're going to kind of go back even further to uh, the Spartans and how they were almost the first state-run government like the Soviets of, well, I guess the 20th century. So um, what I'm going to have you guys do is I'm going to have you split up into groups, um, except for Mason. Ma Mason, you're my camera guy. Uh, and you're going to look up, well, Spartans and the Soviet Union. I want to see what you guys come up with. Um, you can just tell me right off the bat what you come you up like with. similarities and differences? Mark, yeah, I'm not going to. Do you know what you're I need about? some research time. Don't you want me to research? I you researching. Go ahead. Go no, research. research. And um, I'll, uh... What are you doing? Like, searching for... You're searching for Spartans? No, I'm Spartan. You're doing some general information. Oh, wait, are we in the same group or not? I'm doing Soviets. You're doing Spartans. Yeah, I'm Spartans. Yeah. Okay. Just, uh, yeah. Right. Uh, just do whatever. You're going to search for, uh... Big figures, like famous people for the Spartans and the Soviets. You're going to look up dates of activity. So like the Spartans were uh, 750 to 480 or something like that. And I want you to do the same thing for the Soviets. I want to see what you come back with and we'll have a discussion over what you find. Um, I will... Yeah, then we'll come back to that. So Just the Soviet... Union, looks like it was 1922 to 1991. So, 1922. To 91. To 91. And the Spartans? It's like 750 <laughs> BCE to like 480 BCE. To hmm. 480? Circa. Put circa's in front of those. Cause circa. I don't know. Kirka, sure. actually. Oh, is it Kirka? Kirka. 480 BC. Okay. So, what else do we know about, well, the Soviets? Oh, well, we have like the. Um, communists. The yeah, they're communists. Yeah. Communists. And do we know what that word means? Um, no. <laughs> it's like the idea, though, isn't it? Like, everyone's. Kind of like spread it's equally. It's, it's everything's like, for the government. Everything. Yeah. Like, uh, and stuff. Everything is for the prosperity of the state. state yeah. The state, the government, the state. Right. Everything is equal, and everything is for the benefit of the state. The Spartans are uh, like yeah. the same system. They, they are somewhat communist yeah. in that a lot of what they do is for the benefit of the state. The Spartans worked for Sparta. The family wasn't about family, it was about promoting Sparta. You have kids, not for the family, you have kids for Sparta. State sort of the same education. with the Soviets. And state-run education. So uh, an example would be at the age of 12, I believe, uh, you were sent off to Boys. military school. And uh, that, was, that, that was the big thing about Sparta, is that they were a military-run system, right? Everything revolved around hoplite f fighting for the Spartans and the protection of Sparta. The Soviets, sort of the same thing. Uh, the Soviets had a system where they built up weapons. Uh, they had one of the biggest uh, stockpiles of mass or uh, weapons of mass destructions, uh, and the Spartans were the best of what they did with hoplite fighting. Um, so, I mean, uh, can, can, the connection can be drawn between Sparta and Athens, how Athens was probably, you know, the democracy, like America, they were in an arms race. Uh, Athens was more navy, and the Spartans were more, uh, you know, land fighting. Uh, but the, the Soviets and the Americans were sort of along the same lines. They both wanted the same weapons, they wanted to 
the nuclear powers. Um, they fought on the same sides. They fought on the same sides. Well, well yeah, because, and then because added, of yeah, because of their 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 similarities in terms of communism. They were both state-run governments, right? Well, no, that I meant about the. Spartan and Athens fought together and then were enemies. And yeah. And yeah. yeah, yeah, that, that comparison can be drawn, yeah. Uh, the Spartans fought the Persians with Athens. The Soviets and the Americans fought the Germans during World War II. Okay. Uh, so those comparisons can be drawn. And then later, the Spartans and Athens would have a war, as well as the Soviets and the Americans, during the Cold War. Um, so there's a lot of connections to be made from a uh, people that existed a couple thousand years ago and a people that existed, what, within? 90 years ago. Yeah, within the past couple of years. 1991 yeah. was... Yeah, true, I guess. So, yeah, like 91, 30 years ago. that is just before I was born, I guess. 96, so five, five years. years before I was born. So, that's just a little bit out of touch, but... There are people that probably still go to school that probably, you know, still had the Soviets at their back door. You know, they, they, uh, they probably don't remember, but uh, you know, it was just right there for them uh, as as kids or as babies. Um, whereas the Spartans were a couple thousand years before we were born, so this is way out of sight for us, and this is just within sight. Um, so. My whole goal for this is, for this lesson, is to kind of get you to think about uh, how, you know, like the Spartans and the Soviets and the Russians, how there is a connected sort of timeline. There, there was Spartans who were the state-run government of this period, and then there was the Soviets, and then now what? What do we have now that kind of seems like communism, or that seems kind of along these lines of like states kind of run your life or you know do we have anything north korea china china Russia? both communist governments so we have north korea over here we'll abbreviate that north korea is a modern uh communist country um and it's, it's a vestige of the Soviet Union. I mean, uh, it was during this point where the Soviet Union kind of spread their ideas into North Korea, uh, well, into the peninsula of Korea. And so we're still seeing that communism still exists today, and it, uh, it even existed here in 750 BCE with the state-run government of the Spartans. Um, yeah, so what do you guys think? Any, let's, let's do a little discussion. Uh, my overall question, um, what, what things do we see today with the Russian meddling that we can you know, maybe see with the Soviets during this time period, during the 1920s through 1991? I mean, like, like, Soviet, like in terms of like uh, the Soviets had their fingers or hand all over like Latin American governments and Cuba, Afghanistan, yeah. Afghanistan, a lot of those, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of Middle East meddling either to the Soviets, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, and what do we see currently with the Russians and meddling? Yeah. And, uh, Something about the U.S. election. Something about the U.S. They're election. Still trying to Ukraine. Get Ukraine. Yeah, they're, they're trying to expand. They're Syria. trying to put people in power that they can like control in right. other co countries. Yeah. Yeah. So. Which is what they've always done. Yeah. Um, the they, only and and I point this out. The only difference really between the Soviets and the Spartans at this point is the fact that the Spartans were very isolated. They were not. They did not want to move. Mm -hmm. They thought Sparta was these four villages, and it was nothing more. The Soviets, on the other hand, wanted to expand, right? They wanted to reach out and influence as much as possible. Um, so that was really the one difference between these two that we can point out right now. Um, but yeah, so my next question is, is how does history 
influence the present? Well, you still have like um, certain aspects of um, communism when it was the Soviet Union that are still in play in current Russia. Like you have um, Vladimir Putin who refuses to step down as president, even though his term has been way he up. Was, he was a prime minister for he was president and then he became president minister, and then now he's president again. And he changed the system, and now he's president. Yeah, so that's kind of like yes. a, I feel like a communist. Yeah, it's a communist aspect. idea. Um, government meddling, uh, the Soviets and government meddling. Um, so I mean, even though. Uh, the idea of communism seems like an old idea. Uh, there's still, you know, vestiges of communism that still exist. Uh, the ideas of the Soviet Union spreading their ideas and trying to influence as many people as possible. Um, there's still a lot of like tension between the United States and Russia. Yeah, there's still this United kind of Soviet like the, this shadow Cold War thing that's going on right now between Russia and the United States currently. That kind of seems like it's sort of repeating itself with the Cold War with the Soviets and the Americans. So uh, when you think of that, today we have the Russians and they're meddling in our elections currently. Um, and what do you guys think of this? Like, should the United States government do something about this? Or how does it, how does it play into how you will vote in the next election actually is? Do you think your vote matters when potentially the Russians will continue to meddle in our elections in the future? Like, will you go vote because of that? Or that having that idea that there's going to be this, you know, sort of unknown vagueness? I mean, I'll no probably you, still vote and hope we don't hope like that happen that. again, I yeah. guess. You know? I like security to be done. Yeah, you think um, so? Well, yeah, we need for sure more honest people, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, we need better candidates, I think that's for sure. But I know you response too, well. like they did put sanctions, yeah. some sanctions, which maybe like put more sanctions on something. Okay. Like Oprah? Oprah. <laughs> Oprah for president, 2020, <laughs> something like that. Um, I'm going for. So what do you think we're going in the future? What do, what do you think the next government like the Soviets and the Spartans and North Korea, what do you think the next government is going to be that's it's like these two? I mean, we know that history repeats itself. It's repeated itself with the Soviets after the Spartans, and it's still sort of a thing with North Korea and China even a little bit. So where, where, where do we go from here? What is the next thing? Yeah, like maybe like even Syria after their civil war, you know? Yeah. We're kind of already going in that direction, I feel like. But the uh, Assad regime and okay. the development of like, nuclear weapons and yeah. stuff like that. But they're, they're still not going to be like the Soviets. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, but I don't think anyone's going to be as big as the Soviets. True, as yeah. Are, you know, but like, they can still have like the little yeah. sockets. I'm not even going to have North Korea up here because... Mm, they're not near as powerful as no. the, yeah. Soviet, the Spartans. The Spartans were the best warriors of their day. The Soviets were, you know, the Great. most expanding communist country uh, that we were scared of as Americans. Uh, you guess China, period. if you got the wrong leader or something. You think China, and I mean, China That's is That's the only one economically that would be possible. Economi economically, China and has governmentally. a growing middle class, uh, very much expanding middle class. Um, we have a ton of money, a ton of resources. They're already a little bit communist. Exactly. They have this weird system where it's sort of democratic, but it's also sort of communist. I mean, that's country the like mixed economy. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, the, the the people get to participate. They get to have jobs, and, and and they make money for themselves. Unlike the Soviets, who you basically get assigned a job, you work that job. And you get your rations. Mm -hmm. You get your food and your cigarettes and your, hate to say it, but vodka at the end of the day. It's a horrible, horrible example. It's very stereotypical. But, um, but China has sort of taken this system and changed it. And yeah. they may potentially be successful with that into the future. Well, they have yeah, an expanding... They, like, got a couple guys, the wrong kind of leaders or something. 
Yeah. Things could change. They could go crazy. Who knows? And what what did we see in the news recently about China with their president? He's gonna be like elected full time or something. Yeah, the right. government is trying to change the system. They're like, oh, we, uh, you know, the president is like, well, I want to be permanent. That's risky, you know. Risky and business. so we see China and the Soviet unions. Soviet Union sort of is becoming this new sort of monster for us in the future. China and, and it's like growing middle class and it's sort of, you know, either becoming a threat uh, in terms of uh, cyber technology and hacking. And we see that with Russia and hacking and we can only expect that it'll expand into the future. Do you um, think Donald Trump is going to try to change the system? The president? Potentially. No, I don't think he's going to change the system. The, the, but the there is only a few countries. There's only a few countries that like economically and like who have the resources that could be anything even like the Soviet. You know what I mean? Sure. Well, and the U.S. is technically one of them, but it will never happen. The Soviets we have were too many checks and balances. China's going crazy. It sounds like. Yeah, with their president. Well, it's like, but they're like I think like China was very heavily centered around their economy because they're like really big. So if like True. people start like. Being afraid of China, and then China will kind of crumble, kind of like this. Yeah, is it, 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 it a bubble? Money yeah. talks. Is it a bubble? If you can get That's Nike's saying, like, eventually made for cheap, it doesn't matter where they're, they're from. from. Everybody knows that choice. already. There, and uh, does anybody know about the tariffs Trump, Trump wants to do? Yeah, I just read a little bit about that. Yeah. Something about like aluminum and steel um, or something. China is, I think, uh, most steel in the world gets produced here in China, and now that Trump wants to, well, has, uh, it, you know, um, placed these tariffs on steel coming into the United States. Well, we can't... Who knows what will happen with, with Did he China. place, like, a complete tariff, or is like... It's a 20, uh, I think it was 10 to 25 percent tax on any steel and aluminum oh, that's so coming into still, the United States. Yeah. Okay. So, there may potentially be tensions between China and the United States in terms of, well, the United States is a big buyer of China steel. China hates the United States, though. So. What's that? I mean, China's never going to, like, they need us. They need yeah. us. That's the problem. We need them and they need us. So if they give us a bunch of money that we gave them, yeah. then it's all that stuff. Well, we're in well, debt. With these uh, last five minutes, I have instruction. Oh, actually, two. Two, two minutes. minutes. So... <laughs> We know that steel is coming from China into the U.S., right? And there's a 25% tax on that steel that they have to pay the U.S. Like, what, what do you think is going to happen there? Do you think China is going to be happy with that? Probably not. Mm -hmm. no, I don't think it'll stop They have them. to pay the United States 25% more in their tax good. on steel to the United States you know, when we were a big buyer of their steel, and now, potentially, they won't, they'll probably you, take their business somewhere where else. Do you, how do you make steel? <laughs> anyway. Like iron and aluminum together. So, my, sure, yeah. my, uh, how do you make iron? With these last five minutes, um, I wanted to do a uh, Google Forms thing, but I don't have that ready for you. Uh, what I want to do in the last five minutes is just have you guys talk among yourselves about this sort of interrelation between, you know, history and where we're going in the future and what it is now in the present. Take about five minutes, come back together, and we'll move on. There's always somebody who's trying to take over the world. <laughs> There's always somebody. Ooh. Okay, Mark. Somebody okay. Crazy. There's always somebody crazy enough. Yeah, well, I guess like you? Like, <laughs> China and the United States, well, like, we both need each other. So I feel like if China pulls back on, like, not like things don't sell steel, but they'll sell less of it to us, and eventually the U.S. That's kind that's of what, that that what we want. And they'll just reject, like, we want to the tariff. to make our own steel and stuff. Isn't that the point yeah, of the tariff? Yeah, it's too expensive to do it here. No, that, I so mean, that would work then. We don't want to have to buy as much. That's the point. Mark, yeah, that's, I mean, that's well, a good man, point. Though, it, but, like, both ways. China will yeah. stop sending steel. They'll probably do business somewhere else, right? We can assume that. At least less that. business. Mm -hmm. At least yeah. less business, yeah. Um, to the, I mean, less business somewhere else. China's going to go somewhere else. And the United States ha has to compensate 
with producing steel of their own, um, which is expensive. To they want to do that, though. I, I mean, if, if the example is revolution. Nike. When we were making our own stuff. The, where does Nike produce most of their goods? Like India. Uh, United In States China, of America. Not America. <laughs> Yeah, not America. America. They they make their stuff in China, right? Like, I think they make well, some stuff in Mexico. China. China. Is it Asia somewhere in Asia? We don't America. talk about Vietnam and the man. They got the they got in trouble a while ago now, or something. So we have Nike making shoes in China or producing them in foreign countries, right? They make those shoes for how much? Do you know? Roughly about three dollars. Three dollars. Sorry, this is a guesstimate. They produce them in China, pay China whatever, and then come back to the United States and sell for what fifty? Sixty. Uh, 60, 60 70 plus. 70. Yeah. Nike's making profit. I'm on that. But they, you know, compensate for advertisement. But that's because we make them for cheap shipping. Yeah, but, but, but like all those things, Just they make them in China, profit. and it's still because you cheaper. can make them cheaply in China. If you were to produce those here in the United States, and this follows along with steel, if we were to produce steel in the United States, how much more expensive would they be? I think if you produce, I don't think that's a great because steel's going to weigh a lot more. It's going to cost a lot more to ship, <laughs> so it's going to. I'm really like, getting, we're talking we're getting about, away from. We're talking about China now. We're, we're that one talked a lot about, about Sparta in a while. So, I know. <laughs> Sparta's well, tight. Sparta's good. I <laughs> love Sparta. <laughs> what I'm saying, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> we kind of got all over the place, didn't we? But anyway, so to wrap it all up, uh, we have the Spartans and their threat to Athens, and then now we have the Soviets and their threat to the United States, and now potentially we have China. That poses to a us. potential threat to us two big, in two a different way in the than world. warfare. I like the connection. potentially trade warfare. Uh, who knows? Cyber warfare. Warfare warfare. But we can't make that jump. That's just a comparison to the future, and this is a comparison of the past. Okay, good job. <laughs>